so everybody can go to SharePoint and fill out the columns so we can have an estimation of how much uh, to budget. Then when would we get the yes or no from the South? Mm -hmm. Hi, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Good morning. good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So joining us for today will be Teacher Pravin for See the Culture in Our Essay. So there's a few ground rules before we start. Uh, as hosts, we will be muting everybody. So if you would like to speak, please put your hands up. Then Teacher Pravin will attend to you. Okay? I'll hand it over to Teacher Pravin. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much to the moderator. Okay, so uh, this is our third session, if I'm not mistaken, after our first two sessions. Uh, am I audible? Can you hear me? All right. Okay. Cool. Okay. So it it has been uh it's been uh, I've been following the sessions myself and it has been eye opening. Like I'm really learning a lot as a teacher myself. So I'm super excited uh to be presenting today about culture. Uh, I think culture is something that is very um. I mean, when we look at culture, sometimes we narrow it down to a certain thing like oh, okay, culture is heritage. But actually, culture is much bigger than that. Uh, culture is the things that we experience every day, uh, right from the food that we eat, from the music that we listen to. Everything is a form of culture. And that is what uh, I'm going to be talking today. Hopefully, you'll find this session beneficial. Um, okay, before that, I forgot to introduce myself. Just let me quickly do that. Okay, uh, my name is Teacher Pravin. Uh, my real name is Pravindaran. Okay, so I'm currently teaching in a secondary school in Terengganu. So I'm really close to the sea, really close to the beach. So this topic is like, uh, makes a lot of sense to what I do every day uh, because I see the beach and the sea every day. Okay, so um, let's start off. I've shared my screen. I hope you can see it. Okay, so I think we can begin um let's start okay so it is loading okay so uh we'll just do a quick recap of what you did uh two days ago i mean for the last two sessions this quick recap is to just to like uh get you uh, familiar to what we're going to do today and today we are going i'm going to introduce a lot of um a lot of new words for you, I think. A lot of new concepts. So it is important that we recap what we did before we go into what we are going to do today. So in the first session, teacher Liana, she talked about the five elements of stories. Um, she particularly focused on the characterization. Like how do you build the characters? Okay. When you're writing a story, uh, it's important to look at the characters because they are the movers of the story. So that is uh, the, the main thing that teacher uh, Liana focused on. And also she talked about the theme, the conflict, the plot, and the setting. Okay. And then uh, yesterday, uh, you had a session with teacher Shah who talked to you about uh, how to hook your participants, uh, participants, how to hook your readers, like how to start off your essay. She gave five examples. Uh, analogy, description, dialogue and monologue, flashback, and vice statement. Uh, so these are five ways that you can hook your readers when you write something. So uh, the thing about us humans, uh, something about us is uh, we are actually born storytellers. Like all of you here today are storytellers. That's why you are here today at 10 o'clock listening to me talking. Or not, you'll be doing something else in your life. Or maybe your parents forced you. I'm not sure. But that is why we are storytellers. That is why you are here today to learn how to, to tell something, to take a simple story and tell it out. And these two concepts introduced by teacher Shah and teacher Liana are very, very important. That is the fishbone and the hook. That is the core of your work, of what you're going to write. 
So this, uh, so now we are going to move on. Okay. So today, what we are going to do. So today's topic is a bit um, is is something which which is very common to you. You know it. Uh, but it's something that uh we overlook. And the older you grow, the more you will overlook it, because you become, uh, how do I say this? You become a part of this culture that you are blind to see other things. But growing up, you are young, you are curious, you can see the world in different perspectives. But as you grow older, uh, things change. Okay, so that's why we have to continuously learn. Okay, so what we'll be covering today? The first thing we are going to cover is why is culture important? Okay, and then uh, we're going. I'm going to give some examples of culture in movies, uh, followed by a small activity called encountering culture, which is very simple. Um, and then uh, our circles of influences. What are the things that influences? And finally, how do we add culture in our writing? So I give I'll give four examples on uh, four ways that you can add culture in your writing. So that's what we are going to be focusing today. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start off with why is culture important? Okay, because culture plays a strong part of our lives. Okay, it's in everything that we do, everything that we experience. Okay. And the next part is, uh, it actually shapes our, it actually shapes our humor, the way we look at jokes, uh, it shapes our hopes and our fears. So that's what culture does. It's, it's, it's not something that, um, the way we look at things, our culture determines that, our budaya, our, our background, our family background, and all of that, okay? So culture also influences our views and values and culture shapes our reactions. That means when we look at something, our culture shapes to how we look at it. Okay. And put this all together, culture, it determines how we think and what we do. Okay. That is uh, how we react to something and what we think and what we do. Okay. I'm going to give a quick example. Say, if you look at the ocean, and you are, say, a fisherman, a fisherman's child, you will look at the ocean at a very different level, okay? You will see the ocean as a place where your father gets fish to sell to make money. The ocean is the place where it's a source of income. That is how you will look at the ocean. And you will have a close bond with the ocean because that is what you have been, uh, that is what you have been seeing. But if, say, you live in a city life, all your life, you look at the ocean as a place of relaxation. So when you develop your characters, what is the cultural background of your character? Is it this city boy or city girl? Or is this, or is this uh, character that you're developing? Is it living right by the beach, seeing the sea every day and as a close, uh, how to say, a close relationship with the sea? Something very... Uh, very abstract, very close, uh, very loving towards the environment? Or is this character someone who doesn't really care about the environment at all and then suddenly he encounters something and then he realizes or he or she realizes that, oh, the environment, the sea is uh, basically our livelihood. I'm just going to quickly go to another story before I move on. I think this is important as Malaysians or people living here in Malaysia for us to understand this. It's only recently I came to know this and it blew my mind. Um, and also realized about the cultural part of uh, being a Malaysian. So it's very interesting. I, actually, I did my studies in the US. And while I was there, I met a guy. And then he was talking about the geographical location of the US and all that. I was just listening. And then he asked me, what do you call the place that you live? I said, oh, it's Malaysia. It's a peninsula. And uh, yeah, it's called... The, it's, uh, then he asked me, what is it in, in my language? And I said, Tana Aie. So he said, oh, what does Tana Aie tra translate to? So Tana Aie is basically land and Aie is water. Or maybe in this case, you can say sea. So that just blew my mind because uh, I started to see Malaysia differently. We are in a land covered by sea or surrounded by sea. So we are actually... Uh, are people very close to the sea. That is why we refer to Malaysia as Tana Aie. 
because tanah surrounded by water. And that was what got me thinking, oh my God. And all this while, I didn't see Malaysia like that. I, I'm from Ipoh. Like, I, I, the only encounter to see was when I went to Terengganu to teach. And when I was in the US, I was living close to the sea uh, because I was at Chicago. So that just got me thinking like, oh, okay. So Malaysia is actually very related to the sea. And, and it's something we take for granted, actually. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so what is culture? Okay, so culture is what we experience every day. All of you experience it, okay? Uh, and culture are what makes a country and an individual unique, okay? For example, Malaysia is unique because of the food that we eat, okay? Uh, you can't get, uh, you can get, because, because of globalization, you can get Malaysian food everywhere, but like nothing beats the, the local Malaysian food right at its place. Right, and trust me, this is coming from someone who has did a little bit of traveling. So, Malaysian food is definitely one of the best, I would say. And it's not biasness. I'm not being biased. This is this is the the truth. Okay, right. So this is my cultural background. Okay, so so culture can be anything. Okay, from music to food, it can be anything. Um, okay. So let's just look at the different types of uh, things that we call culture. Uh, so our attitude is also based on culture. Say if like you are from a very uh a, a, a very um how to say a very uh good family background for example okay everyone's family is good but say you are from a very uh polite family background and then the way that you behave was also will be shown through that okay your beliefs also shape your culture. For example, uh, if you are in Indian, if you're a Hindu, for you, you will see beef or you see cow in a different way. You will not see the same way as a, a, another person who practices a different religion. Your language is also part of your culture. The, your customs, the way you dress, the rituals that you do every day. For example, if you're a Muslim, you pray five times a day. So that is a, that's a kind of a ritual that you, you spend time with God. And that's also part of your culture. Okay, behavior, your religion, the food that you eat, and ultimately, right now for us as humans, the music, the entertainment that we consume makes a huge part of our culture. For example, if you listen to a lot of K-pop, you would want to learn Korean. And that is also part of the culture. So again, when you're developing your character, what are the things that you want to put in your character? What are the things that you want to put in your story? So this culture is the how to say you, you is how you add the spice or in BM I would say like penambah perisa like how you want to add the spice this culture helps you to make that it gives your story a sense of uh, authenticity 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 oh my god my spelling okay my pronunciation but that's what it is it brings a sense of originality to your story that is what that when you write your story, when you think about the culture, okay, cu the culture of my character, the culture of the of the of the of the society during at that time, that people do not care about the sea, they always throw something in the sea, uh, you know, they pollute the sea. So, this is the 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 backstory. And what does your character do to go against the, this culture? That is the conflict that is being formed, and that is how. Uh, you will you will write an amazing story, okay? All right. So let's continue. Okay. So uh, uh, I think two days ago, uh, teacher uh, teacher Liana, teacher Marisa, she played uh, Tony Stark's video, and all of you could relate to it, okay? And and it's because Avengers has become like a part of our global entertainment culture, okay? And we all can relate to these superheroes and their lives. We know their hopes. We know their worries. Like when we see Tony Stark, we know that Tony Stark is a, has a has problem with his heart. So he has a mechanical heart. Uh, when we look at Thanos, we view him as the bad guy. But actually, in reality, Thanos is probably good for the planet because he made everything in balance. Um, you know, when human population got wiped out, everything became to normal again. So Thanos, in another perspective, is actually probably a good guy. Uh, and we humans are the bad ones because we are the ones who are polluting Earth. So, yeah, so you can immediately look, when you look, when you see Avengers, it's, yeah, it's, it's superhero flame. You like it, you like the action. Uh, but it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's part of our culture today. Like if, if uh, a, a local uh, TV station or a local... Uh, 
a local uh, cartoon used a character from Avengers, you can relate to it. When you can relate to it, it is part of your culture. So if you, if you look at the story Avengers, right, the backstory was first about a conflict in America. Okay, as you can see, Tony Stark, if you look at, if you watch the first Iron Man, which was the trailer that you watch, uh, it was about him exporting weapons. Okay, he export weapons to a different country, uh, actually not to a different country, to the Middle East, and that was causing a lot of uh, conflict, right? So that was the start of it. Okay, and then it explored world conflict. Okay, it was about the world having problems. Uh, and then finally, there was interplanetary conflict. So you see how the, the, the writers of this story, they are, they are quite a genius. They are, they are genius, obviously. Okay? It's not easy to write something like this and connect to humans all around the world. And we all have different cultures, but we all can relate to this today. So it's, it's, it's genius. Okay? So going back to this. So this clearly shows that when you write your story, at what level do you want to put it? Is it going to be something interplanetary, something global, or do you want to go for something very local? And these are, this is where you push your imagination. And that's what Avengers did. They pushed their imagination. And as writers, this is, and as, yeah, and as you, you, all of you are going to be writing. And as writers, how much conflict do you want to have? And this is where the idea of culture comes in. Okay? The idea of culture comes in here. Like, is this conflict a global conflict that it affects every humans? And if it is, what is being affected? Okay, all right, let's move on. Okay, this is an example of a national entertainment culture that's also now very connected to us. Uh, Agent Ali, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, most of you here would know who is Agent Ali because he's like, uh, if you don't know, it's okay. If you don't know, it's okay, it's fine. Um, okay, so is nationally known uh, and and if you see this character on tv you can recognize it if you can't uh, if you look throughout uh, if you go if you watch a local television then sometimes you see the advertisement or if you go to cinema but you can't go to cinema now i mean two years ago we could uh, but now we, we can't okay so the story about agent ali is always connected to the development of, in malaysia Okay, it, I think one of the movies that I watched uh, talked about uh, how a, a village uh, was uh, was poorly developed at the because uh, the the people were like um, destroying it in, in a way. So again, this is one of the conflicts that you can use. But I'm going to introduce you to something that I'm pretty sure none of you know here. Uh, maybe some of you who are in older, who are old like me. It's, this is called Kaluang Man. So Kaluang Man, uh, I grew up with this cartoon. Uh, it was very popular back then. Uh, it was about uh, this hero called Kaluang, this, this guy that you see in the middle that's ha that has a bad, uh, has, that has a bad uh, face, facial costume, face mask, okay? So it was about uh, this guy who just came out from... Uh, who came out from a mental asylum, who was like, uh, who started off, who, who saw the injustice around him and he wanted to take action. And then he recruited people bit by bit and they formed this superhero team. Um, so this Kaluag man was famous during my time. Uh, I mean, it was famous my time. It's not like 30, 40 years ago. It was like only, I would say like, uh, I'm 32 now. So like 20 years ago, like 20 years ago, this was probably very famous, but uh, this is something that maybe none of you can relate. So again, like Batman. yeah, he looks like Batman and that was the inspiration behind it actually. The inspiration was Batman. But, but what was interesting is, uh, what is, what was interesting about this story is, um, it was actually uh, to show like how someone from the lower part of society, because Kluang Man, this guy is from the lower part of society. Okay, he uh, is from the mental asylum. He is poor. He has nothing. He's a loser. But but he saw the injustice around him and he wanted to take action. So this is another way if you want to think about your story again. You may be thinking, how does culture come in here? Okay, 
how does culture come in here? This guy is at the lowest part of society. But he saw the injustice happening. The rich people were bullying the poor. They were taking advantage of the poor. And he wanted to take action about that. I think it's the same thing. If you think about your story, for example, you want to think from a different perspective. Like, for example, uh, there's this, uh, there's this group of people who use, who abuse this, the, the ocean. And maybe there's a character from the sea itself that wants to take action against these people. You know? So this is maybe another way that you can, you can think about uh, your story. It doesn't have to be like, uh, it push your imaginations. And I think Colonel Man uh, did that. It, it did that perfectly because it showed that someone from the bottom from the low part of society can take action. It's not necessarily the people from the top. And always start, and always, and always, this is this is human history and part of human culture. The revolutions that happen is always from the bottom. The bottom are the ones that can change things for, for, the, for, for the general public. Okay. So keep that in mind when you think about your story. Like the one that is at the bottom, the one that is at the loss they are the ones that can push for change. And, and that is important for you to, to think about when you write your story. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so there's this activity. Uh, let me just copy the link. Uh, I'll put it in the chat in a while. So we are going to do this word wall. It's what encountering culture. So far, the examples I gave you are only... Uh, so far, the examples that I gave you are only uh, movies, but actually culture is more than that, okay? So I've put in the chat, why not you take a try? Let's take like five minutes to do this. I see some chat. Uh, sorry, I didn't see it earlier. Uh, yeah, Malaysia Batman, definitely. And I'm not sure what is Awang Kanit. Okay, that is cool because I don't know what is Awang Kanit, but you know what is Awang Kanit. So that's that's cool. So you see, I'm, I'm pretty old for you guys. Okay, uh, so... Try, try to do this uh, encountering culture. Take like five minutes. Um, let's see how it goes. Uh, it's in the chat if you're looking for it. So you just have to click it. And I think it brings you here. Uh, it's a pretty simple activity. Okay. So let's just take five minutes uh, and let's just do that. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to let you guys, let all of you do it. While you're there, we can actually just even look at it. Wow. Most of you have done it already, I think. It's like five of you already done. So cool. Seven of you, I think. So it's like 10 of you have done it. Okay, that's nice, that's nice. Uh, let's just go through it as well while you're doing it. Okay, so let's just go through the words together. Okay, that 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 will be uh, that'll be good. I think there's only like one or two words there that would like throw you out, out of the block, maybe one or two words, okay? I think blue jeans, all of you know. Sari, I think you should know. Uh, it's a piece of clothing that Indian women wear during traditional uh, traditional, uh, traditional functions. Ah, Chi Chong Fan, now this is very cool. I, I, I love this. Uh, I hope that you know what it is. Uh, if you don't know, you should Google it, and then you should go and get it and eat because it's probably one of the best things that you'll eat. It's one of my favorite. It's a food. Yes, it's a Chinese dish. Yeah. So this, this, yeah. So if anyone wants to say something, you yes. can. Uh, yeah. I think this is all unmuted now. You can definitely uh, say something if you want. How many of you have tried Chi Chong Fun? I have not tried it. What is that? Okay, it is like a rice noodle. 
I thought it was like a music. <laughs> I switched yeah. it up for tabla. Okay. Yeah, I also thought it was a music. I did the same thing. Because it, it sounds very music It's like Chi Chong Fun. Nice. So we all learned something new today. Okay, so yeah. uh, yeah. Chi Chong Fun is... Uh, so my wife, I had no idea what Chi Chong Fun is uh, when I married her. So, uh, and I, I brought her once to try it and she just fell in love with it. It's like, it's like, it's like super nice. Like, yeah, if, if you are, so I think Benjamin uh, said it's a Chinese dish. It is a Chinese dish. You can only get it at Chinese places, uh, but you also can get it at uh, Chinese places that sell halal, halal food. Make sure you try it. And, and most of the time, if you ask me, Chi Chong Fan is pretty halal because it's, it's just rice noodles. And it's, it's really cool. A tango. So, tango actually falls under dance. Where's tango? I can't see it now. Oh, yeah. I thought you said dango, like the food. No. No. But uh, do you guys know what is tabla? No. no. Not at all. Yeah. Uh, cool. cool. Okay, so tabla is a type of uh, percussion. It's like a drum. Yeah, yeah, it's a drum. It's a drum, but uh, it is a... It's, mostly played in South Asia. So India, Pakistan, they use drum. Uh, sorry, they use tabla. They use tabla and it's just, it's just like any other drum. I think in Africa, they use djembe. djembe. So, that's, so again, when you look at these words, there's a reason why I, yes, it's an Indian traditional music. It's so cool. So that is what tabla is. Okay. So when you think about your writing, right? When you use this kind of, I want to say the word artifact. Okay, when you use this kind of words or this kind of things, uh, it brings a lot of authenticity. It brings a lot of originality to your writing. Now, if say if I'm from that culture, okay, say if, if I'm Chinese, which I'm not, okay, if I'm Chinese and I see Chi Chong Fan, now I am immediately attracted to read your writing. But if I'm not Chinese and I see Chi Chong Fan, it's cool, right? Because then I'll be, I'll be thinking, what is Chi Chong Fan? You, you get what I mean? So this is extremely important in your writing. It brings a sense of originality. So all of us know what is McDonald's. All of us know what is KFC. I teach in rural Teranganu, and even my students know what is McD and KFC. This is common. But what is not common are things like this. And things like this is something that you see every day, that you actually experience every day. But it's something that maybe you you uh, yeah you overlook. Okay, so croissant. I think I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Like the French is. I, I say, Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thanks. All right, and then we have tennis. You uh, you guys know what it is? Tennis? I think cricket. 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 So where so where does cricket go? Cricket is a sport. It's yes. A sport. sport. Or, it's a sport. Yes. It's exactly. It's a very boring sport. That went for days after days. Yeah. So you, you actually really spot on with that. Cricket can be very boring. Uh, but there was once I watched this game between India and Pakistan. And uh, oh my God. It, it took it, a couple of days. Yes. Play. It was a couple of days. But the fans were just like every day they would go to the... So I, I watched this when I was in the UK. And the fans would just go there every single day to watch. I was like, wow. And they would spend... Like around six hours. It's like it starts at like uh at say at nine a.m. and then it goes up until three to four, and they'll be just watching, and it's amazing. It's, it's uh, yeah. It is. They're so. But uh, but I think nowadays we don't have the patience for that, right? But but yeah. Maybe like for like uh people who are tired might have it. Mm -hmm. That retired like do not work anymore. Like old people might have the time. <laughs> Exactly. If you are like old and you have time to have, you have the patience to kill your time. I think that is good. Okay. You have so nothing to do for three days. Yes. Watch then you can. Yeah. It's a good idea. All right. So we have tosse. I think you all know what is tosse. It goes under food. Yes. Yeah. Food. Okay. It wrestling. Is delicious food. It's it's good. It's great. I think tosse sport. is great. Wrestling is sport. Wrestling is sport. Football is sport. sport. Baju kurung. Sport. Oh. <laughs> it's clothing. Okay, blue jeans. Most of you wear it. Clothing. Clothing. 
Safari. Clothing. Clothing. Sushi. Kimono. Food. 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 Sushi is food. Okay. Kimono. Where is kimono? Go? Clothing. 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 Oh my God. Gamelan. Those are so beautiful. And K-pop. Okay. So we are done. Okay. So we are going to move on. Okay. So um, again, when you think about your writing, you see the choice of words that I used here, yeah? or the choice of things that I used here, yeah? like gamelan, for example. So gamelan, I think it's a Malay percussion. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I know it's a Malay traditional music. That is I something. I think we have learned about gamelan in school, but I just forgot about it. So cool. Somehow. Exactly right. So this is something that we you can incorporate in your writing, bringing that culture in. So you you may think like, why is that even important, right? Okay, why is it even, why should I even include gamelan in my writing? Or why should I include tabla? Like, like I don't want to be related to this culture. But it's important that you do that. Because why? It preserves the culture. Preserves means it protects the culture. So that the, the humans that come after you, when they read your work, they will have that connection back to these instruments that is, that is dying actually. Because of globalization. Like everyone knows what is a guitar, but not everyone would want to try to play tabla. You know, something like that. So that is why it's important as writers, because as writers, what you are doing is actually a, a very important job. You are preserving something. You are you are actually um, you are actually keeping the culture intact. That is what you're doing when you're writing. You're creating something. So when you're creating something, you need to make sure that it is, it is uh, authentic, it is original. Okay? All right, let's continue. Let's... Somebody just said that their dad used to play cricket. It's amazing. I, I think cricket is an amazing sport. It, you need a lot of stamina for it. Oh, my dad used to play. He always tells me about it whenever I ask him about his school life. So I, I don't think I we play, play ball cricket ball. these days. So I think it's important to connect with your parents. And I think doing this whole writing process is important to also connect to your parents and ask them about how were things those days. So I have some examples of culture here. I'm not going to go through them, okay? Because the slides are going to be available anyway. Uh, but then I'm just going to highlight only two things, uh, governments and languages. So for governments, you have democracy, communism, monarchy, socialism. There's a lot of big words here. Malaysia is democracy, okay? Uh, if you watch Hunger Games, that's a I new do. form of government. So when you, yeah, when you think about your story, you want to think what kind of government your, 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 your fictional country has, okay? So that is, that is something that for you to think. If you want to extend your imagination, maybe maybe you want to write a story saying that the water kingdom has their own governance or has their own government and the land kingdom has their own government. Okay? <laughs> so the water kingdom and the land kingdom are at, at, at war because they have different government systems. And the land and, and the sea and sorry, the water kingdom has been suffering because the land has been polluting and destroying them. But in return, the land kingdom is also suffering. So they need a one warrior to come out and connect all of these people back together. And I think that story is sort of like uh, like Ang. What what story that I forgot? Uh, Luca. Yeah, it's something like Luca. And Luca was mentioned earlier to me, just like five minutes before. By, by Mr. Izani. So, so yeah. So, coming back to that, when you think about your story, think of the, how you want to stretch this. This is your imagination. And I'm, and all of you have better imagination than me. I think Aquaman. So, stretch it. Go, go. Yeah, just like Aquaman as well. So, go, go all out. Think of something out of the blue because the more imaginative you are, the better solutions that you can find in the future. Okay, let's continue. We have a lot of time. Okay, so now we are going to look at some stories with cultural elements. Now, when you look at this, can you just quickly tell them, tell me who are they? Moana, Black Panther, the life of Coco. Yes, so, it, so all of you could immediately relate to it. 
Okay, now let's just take a moment and just and just appreciate what the the characters itself. Now you look at Moana. So Moana is actually about a Polynesian princess. Okay, no, she's not a princess. A Polynesian character. Okay, but look at her clothing. Her clothing, she has that Polynesian chain. She, the her skirt is uh, everything about her talks about the culture. So this is how the character embodies the culture. Okay. And then you look at Black Panther. Of course, he's a superhero, but you can also see the African culture there actually through his necklace, through his uh, uh, how do you say a skull necklace? Okay, you can see uh, the how culture is evident there. Okay, and finally Coco, you can see right from his traditional music, his guitar, it has some Mexican kind of uh, engravings. Okay. And he also had, and also the guy that is dancing with him. Uh, I watched Coco pretty long back, so I kind of forgot the story. But basically, Coco is uh, is a film that that really touches on culture directly. Okay, uh, Black Panther more, not as much, but Coco and Moana has a very strong cultural elements. Okay, and this is something that you also want to think about when you're writing. Like, do you want to bring a sort of like an Indian culture into your into your story, or sort of a Malay culture, or maybe you don't want to think about it in 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 that way at all. You want to think about it like earlier, right? Like Water Kingdom, Land Kingdom, different type of governments. So again, this if you have this idea about culture, there's a lot that you can play with, and there are different type of conflicts that you can explore. Okay. Okay. Now let's just look at Moana a little bit. Let's appreciate this uh, story. So it's based on Polynesian and Tongoan culture. So it's, it's very interesting that Moana is like the first Polynesian Disney princess or something. Okay. So Polynesia is actually very connected to Malaysia because I think we come from the same. So I'm, I'm Indian. I'm, I'm a Malaysian Indian. So, so maybe it's not directly connected to me. But if you are Malay, it's, it's very connected to you because uh, Polynesia and and the Malay art, the the Malay Peninsula, I think, they have similar roots, so that's why Moana actually speaks to us uh, a lot, and and if you see Moana is about the sea as well, so that is why the sea actually plays a big role in uh, in in our own lives as being in Malaysia in that geographical location that we are in. Okay, so the movie has a lot of cultural elements. It starts off with a traditional music. You may want to think of starting off your story with something traditional as well. And there's the backstory of gods and demigods that serve as heroes. So this is also something that you can include. Uh, this kind of concepts is something that you can include in your story as well. So this is... Uh, so this is something that Moana has that maybe your story can also have and maybe go beyond. Uh, let's look at Black Panther. Okay, so Black Panther, okay, it celebrates African culture through Wakanda. So after watching Black Panther, I'm pretty sure all of you did that Wakanda sign, uh, maybe to your friends or maybe alone at your home or to your parents even. So It's just, it's just so iconic though. Yes, yes. So, so that was, uh, I think that's a sign that they use in this country called Lesotho. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure. I might be wrong. Uh, but but that's, that's a, already died, already passed away. Yeah, that's the sad part, uh, Chadwick Bosman. And what is interesting for me about the film was uh, uh, Chadwick Bosman is actually from America. But for that film, for, 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 for Black Panther, he used, the, he used the accent. He used the African accent. And that was not easy for him to do, but he did it. Because that is, again, to show originality. Now, it might be difficult to show accent in your writing, but you can show it in the words that they write, that your characters write. Uh, I recently wrote uh, a, a short story. Uh, it, it got consolation prize for this competition. But there was this one word that I really wanted to use. Uh, to, to show the, the, the character's identity, which was Appa. Appa means father. And, and I used uh, father in Tamil. So that is why I used the word Appa. And, and, and that also showed different meanings because I wanted to show that this character, uh, 
is from is is from the streets, and this character is someone does not have a lot of money, and by using the word apa, it immediately connected the 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 readers that this character uh, has an Indian background, is struggling from the streets, and this character really wants to prove himself. So again, you you might want to use one or two words. For example, maybe you can. If you like Korean culture a lot, you might want to use a Korean word there, just to like show that this connect this character is connected to is is connected to 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 Korea or something. So, so another thing about Wakanda, the whole story Black Panther, it became such a hit. There's a reason to it though, because if you look at media, if you look at mainstream media, if you look at news, if you read online, so Africa is always shown as a continent with little resources and do not have development. Okay, so Black Panther wanted to challenge this stereotype. So stereotypes are something that we think it's true because that is the general thing, because that is the general perception. Okay, so there's a lot of big words there. I hope you can understand what a stereotype is. So for example. You see, um, you see a lazy person, and you immediately stereotype that uh, that this guy, you know, he has no motivation. He has uh, his uh, his no responsibility. He's just weak. But maybe something tragic had happened to him. Maybe his mental state is low. So that's why he's being lazy. He's just trying to regather his thought. So that is like a sort of a stereotype. But stereotype is something that we usually use for race, and is and also for religion, and it, it can be it can get very sensitive. So I don't want to go into it, but I hope you can look at stereotypes in your life, and you can challenge those stereotypes. Okay, so that is what Black Panther did. It challenged that stereotype. It wanted to say that no, Africa is a country rich with resources, but we lost those resources because richer countries invaded us. But Wakanda was able to keep those resources, and that's what Wakanda and Black Panther showed. It showed the wealth. It showed the technological advancement of Wakanda. So maybe you you might want to do this. Like you might want to say that you know, like you're from Bangsa, for example. You're from Bangsa, but you are like one of the poor kids from Bangsa, and maybe you want to show that you are one of the poor kids from Bangsa, but you you are one of those that were able to break through into this uh, how to say this status and change the world and that is something that you might want to show uh, in your story a type of conflict that you can uh, you can develop and also throughout the film um, culture is shown uh, through throughout Black Panther from the dance. Uh, if you watch Black 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 Panther again, you can see a lot of African culture in it, and and that is something they wanted to celebrate, right? Okay, last uh, one. Uh, let's look at this. Okay, uh, this is uh, Coco. Okay, uh, so Coco is a film that's celebrating the Day of the Dead. Uh, I think in Spanish we call it Dia de los Dia de los Muertos. Um, for me, Coco, I I can really feel Coco is probably one of the it's so cool because it celebrates death. In many cultures, death is looked is, is seen as something very sad. But in Mexican culture, death is seen as something beautiful. And Coco tries to show that. And what is even cooler in Coco, I would say, uh, it also got me thinking about death. Like there are two ways that you die. The first one you die in this in this planet, okay, in this earth we die, adios, we go, we go off. And the second time you die is when the last person on this planet remembers you. So I think that's what Coco was trying to show, and I think Coco does that great with the music. And also one of the things that Coco does was uh, it showcases Mexico's uh, uh, folk uh, folk creatures. Uh, creatures. And one of it is this uh, alebrige. I don't know how to pronounce that. Alebrijes, I think. Okay, so this is uh, something that you can also include in your in your in your story. For example, um, uh, I know Hinduism has a lot of this um, this interesting gods that you can you can use. And also, if you look at Malay culture, I'm pretty sure 
there are some characters that you you might want to use uh, is the same i believe for 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 chinese culture or whatever culture you're in you can look for some inspiration through these creatures okay like maybe there was a war and and maybe one of these creatures came and saved them all right there's something that which you can or or maybe uh demigods that came and saved the main character and the sea was saved again right okay so now we're going to talk about this okay this is an activity that you're going to do but first let me quickly explain what it is uh it looks at the circles of influences okay so now you as a human okay you're a human all of us are humans that's why we are here that's why we can speak that's why we can write and we can interact okay but who are you in this world and who are you in this country state city of friendship or family so who are you so this is something which i wrote okay these are the circles of influences these are the things that influences daily okay this is something for you to think as well alone in your room at night or when you are sad and depressed about life this is something that you can think who are you are in this world okay all right so to my family so just look at some of the examples are, are written here so to my family i'm the younger son to my wife i'm a husband to the world i'm the teacher so to the world here i'm a teacher okay to my city in kuala terengganu i'm a newcomer okay because i'm new to kuala terengganu to my friends i'm a playful comedian okay so now i want you to take a moment okay you can think about yourself okay i've given a padlet link here let me just oops let me just quickly get this padlet link i'm going to share it in the chat Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I just looking at the chat. And yes, the avatar was what I wanted to say. Ang, um, yeah, that's the one. Can we put Mervin our story? Definitely. Okay, so I put I put a pad the link here. Okay, let me. So now imagine you are creating a character. Okay, quickly imagine your character circle of influences. So just go crazy. Okay, so like here, this is about me. You can also write about yourself. It doesn't matter. Or you also can write about your character. Okay, let's just take like five minutes to do that. It should be good. I think it's this one here. So I've written something there. I've written. Let me see. What? Wow. It's just a flower there. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is something that I created like five minutes ago. I mean, before the presentation. So for the world, Dawood is just an average unknown human. He's probably a loser. somewhere sulking away you know but for his family dawood is someone who deeply cares for the ocean and for his best friend dawood is a savior of a unique marine life called the dugong a close to a close to extinct species so dugong is a real creature okay uh, yeah i know what a dugong is amazing okay so here i i just changed the word of the the, the name um, who has the ability to talk so this guy dawood he actually saved the dugong Uh, who can speak that's amazing he can talk to the dugong and probably they're going to save the world later on they're going to save the sea they're going to save the sea in kuala terengganu later on i don't know so this is something that yeah that is this is something which i thought of so i think you can take some time to can write you can write about yourself or you can write about a character that you just imagine can be about anything so let's just take like a Five minutes to do that. Where's the link again? Oh wait, it's in the chat. We did not send it actually. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I I I shared it. Yeah. Okay, give me a minute. Okay, here you go. Okay, thank, thank you. So yeah, I think Jana, you asked the okay. While you guys are doing that, I'm going to address some of the questions. So Jana, you said you asked that. Like, do we have to make characters related to see? Definitely not. go go crazy i would say uh maybe you want to do something about the air but then i think the topic they write writing about is about the sea i think uh, i'm not yeah, entirely sure it's about the sea right maybe yeah. you want to write about the air and go crazy about the air and the air somehow saves the sea because there's no one protecting the sea because zeus the greek god who protects the sea is dead so you need a new you need a new uh, champion but there's no one So you look for the air, you look for the land for saviors. Something crazy, like be imaginative. That's why you are. 
That's why your children, children are always more imaginative than adults. Adults grow up, we become bitter about life. <laughs> Don't be bitter. So it's important for you to keep your imagination because that's the only thing that you have in your life. Okay. Just take your time. I see a lot of amazing boxes coming here. I, I, I'm liking the one on Harrow. I mean, everything's amazing. We are going to go one by one for everything. Don't worry. But I'm liking the one Harrow because Harrow is a weird person who can transform into... So I don't know what Harrow can transform into. Into a sea creature. That's nice. Yeah, that's cool. And then Nitika has something. There's a boy named James. He always wanted to be a fisherman. He always wanted to save fishes from the pollution. That's nice. Luke Callahan. Luke Luca is a famous and rich scientist and a CEO for a big company he created, Submarine Adventure. He soon, his rival Gabriel wants to take his company. Ah, so the conflict is between Luca and Gabriel. So that is nice. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, Luca and Gabriel. So this is all the kind of crazy ideas that you can play with. And remember, you are writing. Uh, Fiction. So fiction, you can go crazy in fiction. That is why it's called fiction, right? It's not true. It's imaginative. But when you go crazy in fiction, I want you to think about the culture. Because why? Because when you add that culture perspective and, and you add that craziness of your ideas, what you get is actually something that is true something that people can connect to. If you look at Ultraman, Ultraman, I don't know if you guys know Ultraman. I hope you know what is who, who Ultraman is. But, or Pokemon, for example, it is something which is it's crazy. Okay? It doesn't make sense at all. It's, it's fiction. It's completely fictional. But, at, but on a very human level, we can connect to it. Because the reason why we can connect to it is because it has some kind of culture there. A Pikachu is actually like a cat. And most of us love cats. I love dogs, but most of us love cats. And that is why we still can connect to Pikachu. All right? So there's the culture element still there. All right? It's like a rabbit. I totally agree with Mazlan. Some bitterness can inspire a good story. Exactly. Um, bitterness can always inspire a good story. That's why great inventions happen when you're older because you're bitter and then it that just sparks something good, right? Uh, yes, it can. Thank you, Teacher Shah. It can add a sprinkle of sugar as well. Pokemon is great. Um, I used to love it. I used to love Ash. And then I just stopped watching it. I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe it was too many characters already. Like, I, I loved when they had like 151 characters and they had Mew, uh, which is this amazing character. Was so mysterious. I love that mysteriousness. Uh, then, I, I don't know. It just got, uh, I just got, maybe I just got, maybe I found something else. I don't know. I don't know what happened. We are coming to the end of our presentation. Uh, just a little bit more for me to share. It's amazing the things that I'm reading here. Okay, so keep writing. Just keep writing. I'm just going to go back to the presentation. Okay. Uh, you can multitask. That's why you're amazing people. You can listen to me and you also can keep writing. 
Okay, so now, uh, how do you incorporate, how do we incorporate culture in our writing? Okay, uh, how do we do this? Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to give an example, Raya the Last Dragon. Now, let me be honest with you, I have not watched this. Okay, I have not watched this, so I don't know much about it. All of the information you're going to see here, I just Googled it. Okay, but if you have it's watched it, that's great. great. That's great. That's great, uh, Nurul or oh, Iman. Amazing. It means you're far ahead of me. I love that. Uh, it means you know more about it than me and you know more culture about it. Okay. So the first thing that we do, okay. So we are looking at how we're going to incorporate culture, okay. So the first thing that we do, so there are a lot of big words here. You are going to find a lot of big words, but these are important words for you. Now you're a teenager growing up. The world is crazy for you. As a teenager, the world is a crazy place. Most of the time, you're pissed off at something that you don't know. Maybe you're angry with your parents uh, for no reason. Maybe because your mom must ask you to eat and you're like pissed off with her because you don't want to eat. So it's important for you as a teenager to know these four big things that I'm, ab I'm about to teach you because it will give you a better understanding of the world. Okay, let's go to the first one. Uh, identify social norms. What, is, what are the normal things in society? So these are social norms. What is considered acceptable? So nowadays, when you meet a human, you don't shake hand anymore because that is not acceptable. We are in the COVID season, right? How can you shake hands? So that is not acceptable. But two years ago, that was acceptable. Maybe five years ago or 10 years ago, or in European cultures up until today, when you meet someone, you kiss their cheeks. All right? So that is something acceptable. Okay? But not acceptable in our society. So these are the social norms that you need to think about of your story. Again, what does it do? Why should I think about this? It's all the small things. It is the small things that makes your work authentic. It makes it, it makes it cool. Yeah, Sisu is the name of the dragon. That's cool. Okay, so some examples that I've, that I've given here, you need to wear footwear when you go out in public. This movie is similar to Wish Dragon. I see. Fish dragon, I've not watched that too. Okay, so then another example is you need to speak to elders in a respectful manner and you can use your fingers to eat food. So that, that, is, that is the norm in Malaysia, I think. Okay, maybe in Europe, you can't use uh, your fingers or hands to eat. Okay. Um, okay, so in Raya, the last dragon, one example that I saw was some characters took off their shoes before entering someone's home or any sacred place. Like if you're entering the mosque, you take out your shoes. Um, if you're entering a temple or somewhere which you consider to be holy, you remove your shoes because shoes are considered to be dirty. Okay. And also in this film, there was a sense of loyalty and trust between the core characters. So this, it is, uh, so this is a kind of a social norm that is used in this story that you can also incorporate in your writing. Okay. Now let's move on. Okay, so the taboos. So with social norms comes the taboos. Now taboos are things that you cannot do, which are considered unacceptable or indecent. So every culture has taboos, okay? So like one of the taboos is wearing shoes inside someone's home. Now, if I come to your house here in, the, in Malaysia and if I walked in with shoes, you'd be going like, this guy is, this guy is crazy. What, what is this guy doing here, okay? But if I was in the UK or in the US, I would just walk into your home wearing shoes. And if I removed my shoes, if I walked into my friend's house uh, in, in the US, he would be like, okay, that's pretty decent of you. Thank you for doing that. But you, should not, you shouldn't do that. So, so that is something that we should, uh, so that is something that you can think about. Another taboo in our society is burning the dead. Okay. So most, but in some cultures, in Hindu culture, we burn the dead. Uh, but in cocoa, I forgot. Uh, but uh, but in, in Islam, we do not burn the dead, right? We, we, we bury them. Unless if there's like this, uh, yeah, we, we are in a pandemic. So unless there's like this big amount of corpses uh, and then you want to burn it, it's fine, right? But burning the dead is something that we don't do, okay? And generally, uh, sweeping your house at the eve of Chinese New Year. 
Okay, so if you have Chinese friends, ask your friends. They would be like, no, we, we, my mom does not allow us to sweep the house because it means that it's sweeping away the prosperity. So these are the kind of elements that you can include in your writing. Okay, these are the taboos. For example, why do they wear shoes in the houses? Very good question, Mariam. I think I'm just going to answer that question really quickly. I think the reason they wear their shoes is because everything is carpeted there. So I think the only time you don't wear shoes is like uh, maybe you're going to sleep. But because everything is carpeted, you don't really see the dirt and they just vacuum. And I think they're okay with that. Okay. Is that like the rules? It's not the rules. Like you can always remove your shoes. Uh, but so I removed my shoe once uh, going to my, my Mexican friend's house in the US and he was looking at me like, okay, that's very nice of you to do that. But I re all of us here are wearing shoes. And if you don't wear your shoes, your, your legs are going to get dirty. Your foot is going to get dirty. So he was thinking from that perspective. And for me, it was like, no, I just can't wear shoes to your house. It's like I'm dirtying the place. So again, uh, these are the cultural differences. That, that, that we can, that you can think of. And also identify the taboos. Like if you're writing, maybe you can think about a taboo, like you cannot throw plastic in the ocean. That is a taboo in your story, okay? And one day this corporation threw their rubbish and it caused a lot of chaos. Okay, good question there. Do they wear their shoes to go shower? Uh, no, they don't, but they wear some kind of like slippers to their shower. Um, if they go into their bathtub, they, they, the, they, they remove the, the shoes or footwear or slippers. Um, but uh, at their homes, most of the time they are wearing slippers. If I'm a visitor, I am supposed to wear my shoes. But again, I would just remove them. Okay, now, um, it's kind of cool that the shoes thing is, uh, is receiving a lot of attention and that is so cool because that shows that we are all connected right as humans i'm just going to move on but i'll come back to that question really quickly okay uh, so it's important for us to set the social hierarchy so in any movie that you watched or any thing that you see there is a social hierarchy okay so social hierarchy is how the world is organized so again a very very big word for you so you have gone to three big words. The first one is social norms. Second is taboo. Third is social hierarchy. But again, this is important for you. So social hierarchy is how the world is organized. Okay. So it shows that one group is at the top and one group is at the bottom. So if you watch Hunger Games, you can see the social hierarchy. Okay. If you watch Harry Potter, there's a social hierarchy. In your own life, there is, a there is a social hierarchy. Maybe your mom is at top, your, you are the second, your dad is at the bottom because no one cares about your dad. Uh, just example, okay? Or maybe your father is at the top, like your father is the one ruling the family and then your mom is at the bottom. I don't know. Social hierarchy is something that you need to think beyond, okay? If you look at this is the typical social hierarchy for most societies. So there's the emperor, there's the soldiers, and then the slaves at the bottom. So in Raya, the last dragon, interestingly, so in this is in, not in many, many cultures, but Southeast Asian cultures has a lot of females as warriors. But of course, over time, you know, they only say males are the warriors, but not really true. Um, the many times uh, in Southeast Asian uh, history, if you read through them, there's a lot of uh, heroes which are females so, and warriors, okay, or heroines, or what do you want to call it? Uh, so this is something that you can also pick up, okay? You may want to play around with that. And maybe you have a social hierarchy, a corrupted king. And maybe you at the bottom, you're maybe a slave, uh, you're maybe a woman warrior who's going to change this by going against the king who is polluting the sea, who is destroying the nature. It's up to you, okay? So set the social hierarchy. So again, this helps you when you think about your story. This helps you to think about the conflicts that are about that you can that you can write about. The last one, okay, the last one, uh, identify tradition and rituals. Okay, so tradition and rituals are what are practiced every day. So most traditions are old. Uh, 
some traditions it's time for you to throw it out of the window you get rid of some old traditions for example uh, in the past maybe it was a tradition that women should not drive uh, it's time we throw away those traditions but we can always create new traditions but at the same time some of these traditions are very helpful for us today so you can use them okay for example uh, one of Malaysia's tradition or Asian tradition, we have a very close family bond. Keep that, keep that, that close family bond. Uh, and in Raya as well, this was shown. And interestingly, in Raya, the martial arts that they used was Pencak Silat, Muay Thai, and Arnis. I'm not, not sure what Arnis is. You can Google that. So this is something that which you can also incorporate. Like you have this uh, C character who can do Pencak Silat. I don't know. So cool. It will look cool. Okay. And also in, in Raya, the last dragon, Sisu, the, the, the dragon, is a water deity. Uh, and in most cultures, dragons are always the one breathing the fire. But in Raya, the last dragon, they chose the, the water form of the dragon. Okay. Or they call it Naga. Okay. Yeah. Sisu is a water dragon. So that, so that is something which is unique in Southeast Asia. Okay, so cool. So I know what is Arnis now. Thank you. Thank you, Hawani. All right, we are the last slide. So thinking about your story, so this was a great example that, uh, that Mr. Izani gave me just five minutes before, and some of you also talked about it. Uh, it's about a story of a sea monster who can transform into a human form. And I think this is something so cool, because why? You can connect the human life with a sea creature. And this is the kind of thing that with a good understanding of culture that you can write something amazing. Okay, that is what today's session about. So let me, we are, we are at the end and let me just share one last slide. Coming back to our first slide earlier. Okay, so teacher Liana gave you the fishbone. She gave you the elements of the story. She gave you the structure. That is the most important thing. And then teacher Shah taught you how to cook everything together how to hook your essay, how to hook your reader, to grab your reader's attention. Because when I'm reading or writing something, sorry, when I'm reading something, if I read the first paragraph and I'm not excited, I might just put it down. And it's the same for you, right? The competition only chooses 50 best uh, publications. And I'm pretty sure we're going to get like hundreds of them. So the hooking is extremely important. So that is why you need to hook the reader. And me giving you the culture today is the C, all right? That is the C of the presentation. That's it what, that is where the fish comes from. That is where your character comes from. It hooks the reader. But where does the character come from? That is the culture that I am sharing with you today, okay? So these slides will be available at the website. Uh, it is 11.04. It is a Monday and it's a holiday. I shouldn't be taking any more of your time because as humans, you need to relax, you need to chill. And I'm going to pass, so that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I'm going to pass this back to the moderator. All right, thank you, teacher Pravin. That was such an informative session. I, let's give a round of applause. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Well, yeah, it's been a great three-day session with all of us. Thank you to those who join on all three days. And if you need a, yes, <laughs> if you need a session refresher, all these sessions are available on YouTube for you to go and see. If you'd like to share the session today, any of your friends, because I feel like it's been amazing. So do send the links to your friend for the session if you think they would like to find out what and how to incorporate culture itself into their writings. Can we um, take some questions, uh, moderator, from, from the students to uh, teacher Pravin? Shall we? Yeah. Uh, teacher yeah. Pravin, would you yeah, be yeah, okay yeah. with that? Yeah, 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 I'm okay. okay. Sorry, sorry, yes, yes, I'm okay with it. 
so if there are any questions uh, please feel free to ask um yeah I, i think it's the right time for me to also uh address like some of the questions in the chat i mean the questions uh were mostly about the shoes but uh do they wear shoes to go to bed uh so the answer is no mariam they don't um but i have seen in an occasion where my friend was very tired and he actually didn't remove his shoes he just slept on the bed with shoes so it happens i think but they don't they don't they, they don't wear shoes generally they don't wear shoes to the bed uh, that's a good question though um but i'm also quite curious like most of the people they always have footwear in, even in their homes they have something that they are wearing uh, some kind of footwear i'm not sure why like i wouldn't wear any footwear but i also think it's because of the climate like in malaysia i mean if your house is not air conditioned and you are wearing a footwear no it's way, it's wear. nowhere yeah it's no way right how any is impossible melt. yes yeah but if it's air conditioned i think it's it should be okay but yeah 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 that's 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 a good question i also am going to share something with you guys that uh, so the padlet stuff that you guys wrote i am going to upload it in the resource in our website resource and uh, it can be a good place um, for you to actually go and get some ideas um yeah Okay so this is a good question there from Jana is it a bit sensitive to put religion in the story because i'm scared if it's a bit racist okay so i think like i said earlier right these are sensitive things but if we do not talk about sensitive things how are we ever going to learn so what is important here jana is for you to write what you feel like writing first do not censor yourself and after you have written it you think about it like is it appropriate is this a stereotype is this my biasness if you think if it's your biasness if it's a stereotype try to challenge those stereotypes try to remove those stereotypes but if you look at it and you think like oh my god this is such a good point like i think this is real this stereotype exists but i don't want to offend anyone what you do is kind of a trick what you can do is do not talk about that specific race give a fictional name to it so nobody can relate to it but when someone reads it they may they may be able to draw some thoughts but make it fictional so you do not you don't offend anyone in that process but at the same time it makes people to think and it's important for you to make people to think because if you don't challenge things if you don't write sensitive controversial things no one is going to write about them and if no one writes about them what happens is it gets hidden all right all those racist and sensitive things gets hidden and things just keep going on and on and on so it's important for you to recognize that and say you know what i've written this it's harmful it can hurt the people it can hurt people it can hurt my friends so you know what i'm going to give a fictional name to it and then you are probably safe that that's another way to go about it but if it's something too negative that you feel like okay this is something i don't want then you can remove it okay is there if there, are there any other questions guys please feel free so oh, okay. thanks jana Thanks Jana for the question. I think if there are no questions, we can Oh wait, there's one sorry, there's one question from Farisha. I'm just going to quickly take it. Uh marine conservation is our theme, right? But it's a big theme. Can I make it can I make it make more specific like shark maybe? Definitely go for it. Go for it Farisha. Or maybe you want to create your own creature. I don't know. The sea monster. <laughs> you maybe you want to create this new species called shark zooplot or something and shark zooplot are now being extinct because we love to eat yeah we love to eat them and shark zooplot actually uh, maintains the biodiversity of the sea but now they are gone what are we going to do so again go go wild go crazy that's why it's fiction i already have my um fiction creature named dindel So cool, so cool, Glenny. 
All right. So I think there is uh, there are no questions uh, for now. I think. Okay. Moderator, back to you. Thank you. Yeah. I have I a question. Think... Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. Hello. Anyone have heard about Marine Boys? I have not heard. Marine Boys? Marine Boys. Green boys. What is famous like 40, 50 years ago. I don't know. Okay, about that's it. All. Thank you. <laughs> so I immediately went to go and Google Marine boys. <laughs> Why? So that's how the world works, right? Like you ask something. Yeah. Like, then you, <laughs> you get, ask oh. something like this, and then you you Google it. So that's what you do with your story, right? You like say something, and then you're like, okay. What's that? So it creates the suspense. And that's another way to hook as well, like what teacher Shah told you guys. Now, now we should I'm just curious. put a pop quiz a... on the when they finish of the quest of the book. What is a, what do you think marine. about a marine life? Everybody, like what is marine life to you? Huh. Question. Answer. It feels like a question. Now I'm My curious friend. whether it is a music band or what, what, what it is? I, <laughs> the answer, teacher Praveen. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, it's like so many things like going on, like marine voice, and I see like marine. some Japanese things going marine. on. <laughs> oh, there! Bang it's a cartoon. Ah, Marine Boy was the first color anime cartoon that been shown in a double form in the US. Oh. Ah, okay. Oh, wow. Who found this answer? Why did you Google them? So I think this is something that you can also watch, I think, to get some inspiration. Not I'm not going to watch anime. If anime, I don't want to watch. I hate anime. <laughs> okay, Glennie, but hurts. why? But, but why? I watch anime. That I hate anime. Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Maybe, maybe, Glennie, you need to watch Attack on the Titans. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you so should, you should. That, that, that is too many goals. I think that you should not because that is for 16 years old and up. Oh, oh, really? Okay, okay, that's a no-go. Baku no <laughs> Hero, uh, My Hero Academia. That is a very, oh, Haikyuu. Haikyuu is about volleyball. At least you can learn about volleyball. So, it's amazing how you guys know all of this uh, anime at the back of your hand. Like you just you just you just said three or four animes there, Hawani. Like you just went a boom, boom, boom. I was like, what what is this? What is this going on here? The only animes I know was like Attack on the Titans and maybe uh, maybe Slam Dunk. If that's I don't think that's even anime, that's just cartoon. So, so it's amazing. So that's that's the cultural differences, right? Between us. Uh that is something that you can pick up. That is something that which you guys like you guys can do. Ooh, uh, demon slayer. Don't watch anime. So I think now we'll head on to the moderator and I think uh, is there anything else to add? Mm, not actually. I think we're What's good. Promise Neverland. The Promise Neverland is about to start. So right, we can close the session and uh, you know, we'll, the, the teachers will stay back for a short while. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for joining okay. us. Okay. I wish all of you the best. Okay, bye. Okay. Hope you guys bye. have a great day. Bye. Thank oh, you, Amani. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Glenny. Bye. 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 Bye.